Oh yeah, it's working. I was told what to do, but I forgot. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you for, for coming to church this morning. It is good to have everyone here. And it is good to know that the Lord calls us week after week to get together and bring our worship and our praise and our gifts to the church and to the Lord, and this in order that the word of God and the love of God may be spread wherever we are. But we don't come to worship only on Sunday, because every day, just when I take my first breath in the morning, it is a gift from God, and that's a reason for me to worship. Every time I put my foot on the floor, on the ground, and take the first step of the day. That gives me reason to worship. So everything we do is, must be followed by thanksgiving and worship and offering of ourselves to God. So it's a, it's, it's a joy to be here and also to know that uh, the reason that I'm here is that you have a baby. You know, children of ministers are, are often called uh, PKs, pre preachers' kids, but they also, I think, are CKs, the church's kids. And they, I pray that you will find love to give to that child so that she knows, not only from, from the parents that Jesus loves. Is it a girl? It's a girl. Right? It's a boy. Is it a boy? Okay, that Jesus loves him. And will learn from you that Jesus loves him. So God bless you, and we thank God for the gift of life we've been given. And so I'll hand over to the stewards to bring us the notices for today. Good morning, everyone. Very welcome to our service and a very, very warm welcome to Reverend Temba and Tambo. Thank you for joining us and we are very excited that you are here. Um, are there any visitors with us this morning? Would you please raise your hands? No visitors. We got some visitors. Thanks, Mark. Please keep your hands up. We just want to give you something. And then while you're keeping your hands up, everyone else can perhaps just greet the person around next to them, behind them, and just say, hi, how are you? Please raise your hands again. Mark is looking. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so let's quickly do the notices. Uh, Yaku is still on leave until the 13th. Please contact the office or a society steward if you have anything that you need to find out or you need some help with anything as well. 
um, Sunday School and Teen Church is happening as always and Friday night live. Please remember that the Women's Manana are meeting today after the service as well as the Men's League and anyone is welcome to join. Um, I'm quite sure they'll welcome you with open arms. And then just an advance notice, please, it might be school holidays, but the 25th of June, please just keep that date diarized as we will be saying goodbye to Linda and we would like to make that special and we would really appreciate it if all of you are there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we come to the call to worship and the responses will be on the screen in bold. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild. Lord, uh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And so we join together in singing the hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee, Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let us stand and sing. Set to 
divinity. Please be seated. And let us approach God in prayer. And the responses will also be on the screen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worship you in spirit and in truth, and to worthily magnify your holy name. And so let us give thanks to our God. Let us give thanks to our God. You are worthy to receive our prayers and praises, eternal God, and with all the church in heaven and on earth, we praise you for your majesty and glory, for your goodness and grace. We thank you for the wonders of creation through which you reveal yourself to us. We thank you for the gift of life to us, for your mercy and grace throughout our lives, for the joy of loving and being loved, for all that is true and noble, all that is good and pure. For these gifts, we give you thanks and praise. Gracious God, ruler of all things, creator of all that is, you are the source of all life. We worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. We thank you that you so loved the world, that you sent your Son to be our Savior, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He died for us on the cross. He rose from the dead to be our eternal priest and Lord. He will come again to be our judge. For the gift of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God. Receive our prayer. We thank you for the presence and work of the Holy Spirit, who creates fellowship and love among us, who sanctifies the church and helps us spread the gospel of love to all people. We thank you for this gift. And so, gracious God, in his power, we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice in your service. Strengthen us to serve you, gracious God, and finally gather us and all people to your glorious kingdom. Amen. We come to the time of confession, and so we confess our sins to God. Gracious God, we come to you in prayer, not because we know how and what to ask, but because we know there is no one else to whom we can turn. Lord, hear our prayer. We know that you will meet us where we are, and as we are. Even though we betray your goodness for which we praise you, and are quicker to demand justice than to grant it. Lord, hear our prayer. You taught us to love and forgive, but we have been quick to act, impatient with our sisters and brothers, insensitive to their needs, and disobedient to your commands. Forgive us, Lord. When things go wrong, we accuse you of hiding your face from us. We forget that you call us to seek your face. We associate you only with good things, good health, good food, good clothing, good housing, even good fortune. Yet things sometimes go badly for us and we turn against you, believing that you have turned against us. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, you promise to forgive those who confess their sins to you, Grant that we may be open, we may open our hearts to receive your gracious pardon and live free from, from guilt, renewed by your love. Thanks be to God. And so we join in singing the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we listen to the Word of God for the first two readings of the Word of God. morning church uh, I'll be starting to read from the new international version of the Bible uh, starting from Proverbs chapter 1 and it reads as follows the Proverbs of Solomon son of David king of Israel for gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding ways of insight for receiving instruction in prudence, in sorry, in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables the sayings and riddles of the wise. Warning against the invitation of sinful men. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a, gar a gallant to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My son, if sinful men entice you do not give in to them if they say come along with us let's lie in wait for innocent blood let's ambush some harmless soul let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the to the pit we will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder Cast lots with us. We will all share the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread it net, where every bird can see it. These men lie in the wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who got it. Wisdom's, wisdom's rebuke. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you, who are simple, love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate 
knowledge, repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelms you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Since they would not accept my advice and spend my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their skins. For the waywardness of the symbol will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Moral benefits of wisdom. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning you, your ears to wisdom and applying your hearts to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. The next reading comes from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, starting from verse 11 to 13. It reads as follows. Final warnings, sorry, final greetings. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. Thanks be to God. So, this is the word of the Lord. I think they, they didn't give you the verse 14. Yes, verse, four, verse 14, I'll read it, don't worry. And verse 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that is the blessing we, we give to one another uh, every Sunday at the end of the service. Thank you. It's time to give, and when we bring our gifts to the Lord, we bring them with people in mind. When you offer your gift today, think of someone who needs to know the love of God. Think of someone who needs something to eat. Think of someone who needs a visit. Think of people in need, so that these gifts have meaning. Someone said, put a name to your gift as you bring it to the offering table and pray for that person. As you offer that gift, pray for that person. You may not be able to give them food, maybe they're too far away, you may not be able to visit them, but prayer will reach them wherever they are. So let us bring our offerings to the work of the Lord. Here I am. 
to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Two things that, just two comments I would like to make. Someone asks, why do we stand when we bring money uh, to, to the minister? Well, one, you're not bringing money to the minister, you're bringing money to God. And why do we stand? Because this money is only, only a symbol, a token of what we offer to God. What we offer to God is not money only, we offer all of who we are, all that we have. We bring our skills, our knowledge, our gifts, and we express those words in the Sisutu hymn book, Esishabelosaka Kinnakasibit. The gift I bring is all of me. And so we stand because we say, Lord, this is who we are. Take everything that we are and use it to your glory. The second thing people ask is, why does the preacher or the minister have to move from the pulpit and stand here? It is because even the preacher, even the minister, needs to give to God and give like everyone else. Preachers and ministers are no, not different, they are not special. They simply have responded to God's call to preach. And that's all. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is a privilege to bring these gifts to you and to know that these gifts represent our prayers, our thanksgiving, and our gratitude. Help us, Lord, to use these gifts wherever they are needed, to those who need them most. Help us to be vessels of your love and your grace, that those who have not heard your word may hear it from us. Those who do not know your love may know it from us. And those who need you may see us and hear us. And let us be the vessels that bring all of you to people. Bless these gifts to your holy use through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Isn't it good to be in the house of our Father? Yes, it's great, man. Let us close our eyes in prayer. A gracious and loving God, we come before you today with the heavy, heavy hearts, Lord, burdened by the pervasive issues of gender-based violence and femicide, Lord, child-headed households, suicide, mental wellness, Abuse of all kinds, Lord, and unemployment that afflict our beloved country, South Africa, Lord. We lift up these pressing concerns to you, knowing that you are God of compassion, justice, and healing. Dear Lord, we pray for an end 
the gender-based violence and femicide in our country and across the world, O oh Lord. Protect and empower women and girls across our nation. Grant them the freedom to live without fear, violence and discrimination, Lord. Soften the hearts of those who perpetrate such acts and bring about a transformation in their lives, Lord. May our society foster a culture of respect, equality and accountability. O oh, Heavenly Father, look with mercy upon the children who find themselves in child-headed households, Lord. Surround them with your love, care and guidance. Provide them with the necessary support and resources to thrive despite the challenging circumstances, Lord. Raise up compassionate individuals and organizations to lend a helping hand, ensuring their well-being and a brighter future. O oh Lord, we lift up those who are struggling with thoughts of suicide and battling with their mental wellness, Lord. Comfort them in their pain and despair. Shower them with hope, strength, and the renewed sense of purpose. Lead them to the right resources, support networks, and professional help that they need to overcome their challenges. O oh Lord, we ask for increased awareness and understanding of mental health issues in our society, that stigma may be erased and healing may abound. Oh Father God, we cry out to you for all victims of abuse, Lord, whether it be physical, emotional, or psychological. Provide them with refuge, protection, and healing. Strengthen their resolve to break free from their abusive situations, Lord. Grant wisdom, compassion, and courage to those who support and advocate for them. Lord, may justice prevail, and may every survivor find restoration and peace. And finally, Lord, we lift up the issue of unemployment, Lord. It is very tough out there, O Heavenly Father, in our country. Extend your hand of provision to those who are without work and struggling to make ends meet. Open doors of opportunity, both in terms of employment and entrepreneurship. Guide our government, businesses, and communities to create an environment that fosters job creation and economic growth, Lord. Give wisdom to our leaders as they formulate policies that address the root causes of unemployment. And Lord, we offer this prayer with hope and trust in your unfailing love and faithfulness. May your light shine upon our country, South Africa, bringing healing, justice, and restoration to each and every person and every community. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now we brought the knees of the world uh, to God. Um, the, the musician who was here earlier um, also plays at her church, which is the, the Dutch Reformed Church. So she kindly agreed to come and, and help us this morning. But we found that when I gave them the hymn numbers, uh, she selected tunes that they usually sing at the Enkhye Gap, which are not the same tunes that we sing in the Methodist Church. And so we were going to be truly, truly confused uh, in our singing today. Um, I should have known that or asked about it. I didn't know that she comes from another church, and I assume that she knows the tunes of the Methodist hymn book. And so we do apologize. Uh, I take responsibility for that, uh, for not uh, being aware that we don't have a Methodist who's coming to, to play and lead us in music today. Is that okay? Have you forgiven me? Raise your right hands and say yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, she will be here next week, and she and I will talk through the week and make sure that the tunes that we select are the right ones that we sing. So we were going to sing that wonderful hymn, um, Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, 
and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Do you know this tune? You don't. Anyone who knows it, raise your, your left hand. Okay, nobody knows it. So we will not embarrass ourselves by trying to sing this one. I know the tune, but I'm not prepared to sing a solo. And so this is a hymn from the Methodist hymn book, hymn number 803, which uh, you can go and read the, the words. Uh, you can Google it, in fact, and find the words. And even in, the, in, the, uh, in Google, I think you also will listen to the hymn being sung. So we don't have time to find it now and play it. So we'll skip that one and go straight to the uh, gospel reading that is appointed for today. This is after the after the, the 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 ascension, and this lesson is appointed for the Sunday after Pentecost, and this Sunday after Pentecost is designated by the Church as Trinity Sunday, where our focus in worship is on hearing and teaching and seeking to understand what do we mean when we talk about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority is given in heaven and on earth, has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Here ends the lesson from the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is a joy to be with you today. Um, when your minister has been granted paternity leave. I was talking to some of my colleagues from other churches and and telling them that I will be here today because your minister has been granted paternity leave. And, and these colleagues of mine from other churches said, what is paternity leave? And I told them that, you see, we as Methodists are very progressive. We don't only grant maternity leave, but we give paternity leave so that our ministers find time to bond with their children. And uh, today it's much easier because they, they use disposable nappies. Uh, we used to use those towel nappies and had to be taught how to carefully fold the nappy and how to carefully hold the pin so that you don't hurt the child. Um, and so they, they, they use uh, disposable nappies and uh, these kids today have it easy. And we had to wash them every day. Oh. That was the life, wasn't it? And it is simply a good thing to be what is called a supernumerary. Now, this is a, a kind of hoity-toity way of saying you are retired. And supernumerary simply means one above the required number. And so when a supernumerary is at a time when we are required, like now when Yako and uh, when uh, the, the Herber family have a baby, uh, we are asked to fill in uh, with, whenever they can. So uh, that is our job as retired people. We are called to, to fill the gaps, uh, which is fine with us and it is a privilege to continue to be able to take services and to be with congregations. And so we thank God for this time. Today is designated by the church throughout the world, in fact, as Trinity Sunday. 
And in most churches, the preaching and teaching will be focused on the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. That is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Throughout the history of the church, there have been attempts by the church to, to clearly define and teach a clear doctrine of the Trinity to enable Christians to see God in action in every part of their lives. Sometimes Christians have been told that you worship, how, do you, how can you worship three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And the church has attempted to clarify this, 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 this strange for other people, this strange way of recognizing God and worshiping God. And these attempts, we have to say, have not cleared up all the questions we have about this essential doctrine of the church. Because while it is essential, it is complex to explain. God cannot be figured out. God is, God is too high, too deep, too wide, too broad for anyone, any human mind to comprehend. And so the church will continue to, to seek ways in which People can understand and know God, especially not only to know and understand, but to love God and to serve God. And so, this is the complexity of this doctrine. Listen to what the early church said when they tried to explain what the doctrine of the Trinity is. They said, this faith is, we worship one God in Trinity, and the Trinity in unity neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. Did you get that? Confusing, eh? Confusing. Try another one. We believe that the one God eternally exists in three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that these three are one God, co-equal and co-eternal, having precisely the same nature and attributes and worthy of precisely the same worship, confidence, and obedience. Still confused. And that is why the church sends us to spend three years at seminary trying to figure these things out. So statements of the church can be confusing and sometimes intimidating. First, the language itself is archaic in the statements I've read. It's not the language we speak today. Secondly, it sounds quite academic, philosophical, and most of us just want simple ways to understand, to know, to love, and to serve God. The seeming confusion comes from the fact that the early church was faced with misunderstanding and ignorance about what Christians really believed and thus made every attempt to clear every bit of their doctrine. And that is why we have the Apostles' Creed, for example, I believe in God, in one God the Father, and so on and so forth. Because the church sought to tell the world what we believe. And there are Bible verses that refer to the Trinity, and the following two are the most explicit. But there are many, both in the Old and New Testaments, that imply the understanding and the existence of the Trinity. First, in Matthew 28, we hear Jesus instructing his disciples, go therefore and make all disciples of, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14, those words of Paul when he greeted his his sisters and brothers in Christ, when he expressed the words of benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so the debates and attempts to clarify the doctrine of the Trinity do not point to confusion and disagreement within the church and in the world. They do not point to Christians are worshiping, worshiping three gods. That, rather, this points to the fact that God is so great that our human language, our human faculties cannot describe God. They fall, fall far short 
of describing God fully. This also points to another doctrine, that is the doctrine of revelation, that we have knowledge of God because God reveals God's self to us. We can have no knowledge of God unless God takes the initiative of self-revelation. Just as I cannot know you fully unless you tell me who you are, so we cannot know God unless God reveals God's self to us. That is why even to Moses, that is why even to throughout the history of God's, God's connection with people, God will always introduce God's self, so to speak. I am the Lord your God. And so we only know God insofar as God comes to you and to me and says, this is who I am. And I can let you know me by the things that I do. And supremely, supremely God revealed himself in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God reveals God's self because we are the beloved of God. But chapter, chapter 3 verse 17 in John then says, For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is how we know God. And so today, I choose to, 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 to try and, and help us understand the Trinity by saying, who is the Trinity? The Trinity is God's three ways of being God. God's three ways of being God. One of the helpful ways is how this is, is, is this, this is how we describe God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is God who touches us in different ways and responds to us in according to our need at that particular time. God does not become for us whatever we want God to be, but responds to us in ways that in God's infinite wisdom we need him to be. It is not what we want of God, but what we need from God. Some have described the Trinity as God our creator, God our redeemer, and God our comforter. We all experience God in different ways as we have the need. But this does not mean that we manipulate God to be what we want him to be. It is God who acts for us in response to our need. Have you ever, have you, I think many of us have, prayed that God give us something we need now, today. Hurry up, God, I need this now, and no answer has come. Because God, you see, cannot be manipulated by our needs and our wants and our demands. God responds, responds to us in the best way for us. And so how do we illustrate the Trinity? In a number of ways, and these ways are only useful if we remember that they are only illustrations, only examples. The one and more helpful illustration is that one person, one person can be a father, and the same person can be a son, and the same person can be a husband at the same time. His children experience him as a father, never as a son or a husband. His par parents experience him as a son, never the other two. And his wife experience him as a husband, never as father or son. Remember, this is an illustration, just to make sense of who is the Trinity. It is limited to human understanding and language and can never express fully who God is because we cannot and can never figure God out. God needs to be believed, not figured out. We have faith in God, and God knows us. God figures, figured us out when we were created. God loves us, and that is sufficient. All we need is to receive the love of God. All we need is to receive the love of God. You see, when we try to figure God out, we spend a lot of time 
trying to figure out who this God is and lose out on accepting and receiving what God is given is giving to us. Now, many of you, I think, will understand this. In my home, I want to have all my cups and glasses and everything facing down because I don't want dust to enter to come into those glasses and cups. And the problem with me is that I also want all the handles to be kind of level together. But if I want to fill that cup with water, I've got to hold it up so that it is filled with water. And so, my friends, if you want to, un to know God, if you want to find God, all you need to do, not to spend time trying to figure who God is, trying to work out God as a mathematical or scientific problem, all you need is to turn your cup up and hold it up so that the Lord will fill you with God's love. All you need is to hold your cup up and God will fill you with God's love. You see, sometimes when we spend a lot of time trying to figure out God, we lose out on receiving God's love. How then can we understand God as God reveals self in the Trinity and be able to see God not as three distinct entities, but as one who manifests as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Let me understand, help understand, let me help you understand how we can know God and receive God and love God and serve God. We can look at God also as God over us, God with us, and God in us. God over us is God the creator who acted in the creation of the universe and made you and me part of that universe. God over us is God who created you out of love. And when God created everything, he said, behold, it is very good. The one difference in the account of creation in Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27, the one difference in that account is that God created human beings in God's own image according to God's likeness. Care should be taken, though, not to believe that being created in God's image places us in a position greater and better than all other created things. No. In fact, the following verses teaches us that God appointed human beings to be stewards over all creation. And I dare say we have not discharged that responsibility in a manner that has enabled creation to flourish. Instead, we have acted and behaved in a manner that has brought deterioration to the earth. Think of the pollution in the air and oceans. When God said we must subdue the world, God gave us a command to take care of creation. But haven't we just damaged the world with pollution? The recent use of masks, we thought masks are helpful, save us from acquiring or getting, being infected with, with disease. But masks have also brought a whole new way of littering. Walk down this road and see how many masks you'll see lying on the side of the road. Walk, go anywhere and you will find a face mask littering the place. And I believe now the face masks with the rains that have come and gone into drains and they've gone everywhere else, the masks have also been found in the sea now. And so, we are created by God over us in order that we may care for creation. When God created everything, the Bible teaches us that God saw that it was good. From the beginning, God declared that creation is good. And let me remind you about this, that when God created you, God looked at you and said, behold, he is good. Behold, she is good. In fact, the Hebrew text of the Bible says, behold, it is very good. In fact, when you translate it from the original Hebrew, it says, behold, it is fantastic. Now, can you imagine this? God creating you and standing back and looking at you and saying, behold, 
She is fantastic. You are the fantastic work of the hands of God. And so I want to tell you today that because you are the fantastic work of the hand of God, no one, not anyone, should treat you less than what God intended you to be. Look at yourself in the mirror today. You may not like the shape of your nose. You may not like the shape of your forehead. But God looked at you and said, boy, oh boy. She is fantastic. So if anyone does want to look at you, regard you as less than what God intended it to be, just give them a smile and walk away. And go back, oh, there's a poem, a poem written by Mark Max Ehrman, with the words, and I think many of you have heard this song or the words, that they see the rata of happiness. There, is, there are words there that says, you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have the right to be here. You have the right to belong to God, to your family. You have the right to belong to God's love. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. All things are created by God. I know it is difficult to regard all the hohos in the world as good. But this is what God created. Lizards, flies, mosquitoes, snakes. And someone told me that when God called all the animals and told them to respect human beings, the mosquitoes were not at that meeting. But friends, it is not only those who deal with us accord less than what God intended us to be. We also have dealt with others in a manner that said, you are not important, you are not significant. Is there a time when I have treated someone in a manner that suggested they are not God's image. We need to pray and ask God to forgive us for treating others in, manner, in a manner that lessened their humanness. Or if someone has treated you less than what God wants you to be, there is no point in harboring resentment and hatred in your heart. But pray for the grace of God to enable you to forgive that person. Because if you harbor resentment and anger, you harbor it within yourself, don't you? Let's imagine this. Imagine someone, someone you really don't like. Let's not use the word hate because it's too strong. Imagine someone you really don't like walking through that door, walking all the way through here, and going to sit down at that corner. And you see this person, is oh, here's this person, I don't like this person. What happens to you? Your heart begins to beat faster. Your nerves get a bit rattled. You might even feel hot and, and sweating. And what happens to that person? Nothing. They walk past and sit over there. And you making yourself a candidate for a heart attack by harboring resentment in your heart. Free yourself today. Take resentment out of your life. Take anger out of your life. Live your life as God wants you to be. God over you created us to love, to live and to love and to celebrate love. God over us made us out of love and love that will not let us go. God's love will never let you go. You may do whatever you want. God's love will not let you go. You may run wherever you want to. There you will find the love of God waiting for you. So why do you waste time running away from God? 
stop and hold your cup up and let the love of God fill you as you've never been filled before. Secondly, what time do you stop to end the service here? You see, I don't want to go too on for too long because you might not invite me back here. So, 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 so let's, let's get going. We talked about God over us, God the Creator. And now God with us is God the Son. Do you remember? Right at the beginning, when Jesus' birth was announced, the angel said, you shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. God with us is demonstrated also in the way that Jesus came into the world to live and to be with us. The Word became flesh, says John. The Word took the form of humankind. The Word, God took the form of humankind, sinful humankind, and came to live among us. But God did not take only the full form of humankind, but God wanted to lift us up and raise us up and take us away and out of our wretchedness. You see, God did not send Jesus just to identify with us and live among us, but Jesus came to lift us out of our wretched lives and broken lives and bring us back to what God made, to the fantastic work of God full of grace and truth. He came to identify with the pain of the world, the sin of the world, the brokenness of the world. And the difference here is that he came to identify with us, but not to be like us in our brokenness and sinfulness, but to take us out of our sins and restore us to God. Jesus came into the world God with us, to say to you, I am here, and I will show you the way. Simply just follow me, and learn how to, how to live from me. Simply follow me. And so often, don't we, when Jesus comes and says, follow me, don't we so often ask, where, where to, Lord, where do we go? Remember that the words of that hymn, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It does not say, learn the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It does not say, know how to pray in flowery, beautiful, poetic language. It just says, trust and obey. There used to be a jazz song, I don't know whether it's still played, with the title, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. You see, when you follow Jesus, you don't know where you're going, but you trust that Jesus will lead you beside still waters, that Jesus will help you overcome Whatever obstacle comes to you, all you need to do is to say, Here I am, Lord. And all you need to do is to walk with this step of assurance and confidence. Because when, when, you, when, when you follow Jesus, you see, you walk with confidence. People will look at you and say, But we know this person. She comes from... What's the worst place? Oh, I, I know there's a place called Pet Sonar Water. We know this person comes from Pet Sonar Water, but look how confident he is. And all you do, you have done is, I don't know the way, but Jesus knows the way. And as long as Jesus knows the way, I will follow him. And it's okay with me. Because Jesus gives you confidence. And the beauty, the joy with following Jesus is that he doesn't stand and tell the world that, look at him, he's following me. Uh, he doesn't know the way. So Jesus just lets you walk with confidence. And people think you know the way, you know nothing. But because you've got Jesus, you see, that is the difference. That is the difference. Walking and following Jesus is the best thing that you can do. And we follow Jesus because Jesus knows our suffering. Jesus knows our troubles. 
Jesus knows our trials and temptations. He knows because He has been through those trials and tribulations. When we go through temptation, He knows what temptation is because He was tempted. Don't the Him also say, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. God with us is Jesus who comes and walks with you and knows the way and will never mislead you and will never take you to a place that will bring you unhappiness. Thirdly, God in us is God the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 5 we are told that God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And Paul begins this passage in Romans by stating that we are justified by faith. Now those who understand the language of typing and writing and computers will know that justifying a line, I think, means that everything you type has been set in its proper place. Am I right? All the lines end up straight, justified. You are placed in proper alignment. And this is what Paul says, that when you believe in God, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are placed in proper alignment to the will of God. You do everything in accordance with the, with the will of God. You don't go beyond or before the will of God. We are in proper alignment with the will of God. They say, Batswana bakai, batteng Batswana kamu. Lisi le fokule khotu eng khoshokolo. Khoshokolo khake is to repent. But hape, I think, ka barolong, bar fau shokola something, you you untie something, you undo something. Am I right? So, when something has been tied tight, they say sukulla, which means undo that thing and put it in proper alignment. So, does the Holy Spirit do for us that he comes and releases us and he will, will put us back into proper alignment with the will of God? And this is it for me, that God in us is that spirit about whom Paul talks and says the spirit himself testifies our children of God did you hear that the spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God he reminds us this Holy Spirit reminds us of who we are and to whom we belong we are God's children. Or maybe then we are, as some people say, I think it was Billy Graham, the evangelist, who said, we are the king's kids. Do you get that? We are the king's kids. You're not just anybody. You are a child of God. You are a prince and princess in God's kingdom. The Spirit tells you that you don't belong to those dark places. You don't belong to those ugly, to, the, to an ugly world. You don't belong to the evil one. You belong to God. And maybe today we might have lost our sense of belonging to God because we have done whatever we want. We have followed our own will. But do you remember the story of the prodigal son? who came back home to the Father. Perhaps today, I pray that you rediscover, you rediscover your sense of belonging. You belong to God. And so when you belong to God, you live and act like a child of God. Well, I know that, you know, in England they have a problem, you know, the king's children are not behaving the way they should behave. Uh, there's one who has written a book and told stuff about, about his, but that's a worldly thing. You are God's own child. 
And nothing is going to take that away from you. They can take your wealth, they can take your dignity, they can take whatever, but they can never take away from you the fact that you belong to God and God loves you and God will never let you go. And so, today, walk with confidence, walk as a child of God, live as a child of God and tell the whole world, when people look at you, you can say it with a little bit of arrogance and say to them, do you know who I am? And they say, I don't know, and tell them, I am a child of God. And God loves me deeply and dearly. Thanks be to God that in the Holy Trinity, we have all that we need to have life. God over us, God with us, and God in us. Amen. We now prepare ourselves to receive communion. And I invite you to be still for a moment and focus on the truth and the knowledge that God is with you always. Let us be still. Or perhaps let us sing. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. We will not go through all the liturgy of the service of Holy Communion. I will simply lead the prayers that will lead us to, to Communion. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so we declare that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so let us pray the prayer of humble access. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to forgive. So feed us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen.
as we see in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us, and we feed on Him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us. Let us feed on Him in our hearts. The blood of Christ shed for us. Receive and drink from this cup. Feed on him by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us and poured out for many. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you and his blood which was shed for you. Come and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Do we kneel when we receive communion here? So we invite you to kneel on either side of the rail, receive the elements, and once you have received, return to your seats and will dismiss all of us at once at the end of the service. Is that okay? Draw near now with faith. Will you follow me with the way? Okay. Keep forgetting to switch this off.
bind us together in holy
Go labor on, spend and be spent, is the concluding hymn. Go labor on, spend and be spent, thy joy to do the Father's will. It is the way the Master went, should not the servant Tread it still. Go labor on, tis not for naught. Thy earthly loss is heavenly gain. Men heed thee, love thee, praise thee not. The master praises what? Amen. Go labor on while it is day. The world's dark night is hastening on. Speed, speed thy work, cast sloth away. It is not thus that souls are one. Men die in darkness at your side Without a hope to cheer the tomb Take up the torch and wave it wide The torch that lights times the has Toil not, faint not, keep watch and pray. Be wise, the erring soul to win. Go forth into the world's highway. Compel the wanderer to come in. Toil on in, in thy toil rejoice. Toil comes rest for exile home. Soon shalt thou hear the bridegroom's voice. The midnight peal I come. Let us now go, remembering that we are one, even as the Lord our God is one. Let the faithfulness of our lives and the fullness of our love proclaim our unity in the Lord. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy no. in Jesus. My head and my heart never truly align when I think of tomorrow. Even when I find it hard to see a way When all I feel is fear and pain I'll look to you and I'll call your name Jesus you come through for me Yes, I believe in you, my provider. You come through for me. Yes, I believe in you, my provider.
oh, oh, yeah. It's so easy to put all my faith in Jesus when everything is sweet like honey. What if the real miracle that I need is found in the waiting? Even when I find it hard to see away. When all I feel is fear and pain, yeah, I'll look to you and I'll call your name. 